away Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh iPhone 10. It is the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. And to tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil back up. Phil? Thank you, Tim. I think you can imagine there are a lot of people at Apple that didn't get much sleep last night preparing for this. It's this, this is so exciting. I mean, it is all screen. It is beautiful to look at. It is incredible to hold. The display fits edge to edge, top to bottom. It goes into each corner where it follows the tight curve of the design. It has glass on both the front and the back, using the same super strong formula as iPhone 8. The band is made from a surgical grade stainless steel that's both durable and polishes to a beautiful finish. And look how the glass and the stainless steel fit, form a continuous surface from front to back. There has never been anything like it. It's engineered to be water and dust resistant at a microscopic level. It comes in two beautiful finishes, space gray and silver. Each has an incredible depth and a pearlescence to the color in the glass. iPhone 10 has an all new display. It's called the Super Retina Display. The level of quality and responsiveness and efficiency is really quite a breakthrough in mobile displays. To start with, the Super Retina display is 5.8 inches on the diagonal. It's got 2436 by 1125 resolution. That's over 2.7 million pixels. There's 458 pixels per inch. Now, this is the highest resolution and pixel density ever in an iPhone. It's remarkable how this larger display can be packed into a phone that fits so comfortably in our hands. The Super Retina display uses OLED technology. This is the first OLED display great enough to be in an iPhone. Traditional OLED displays have had great benefits, like high contrast and resolution, and no backlight means you can make them thinner. But they came with trade-offs in brightness and rich colors and color accuracy, at least compared to our Retina displays. 
But the Super Retina display overcomes all of these deficiencies and lives up to all that we expect from an iPhone display. In addition, the new Super Retina display supports HDR in both the Dolby Vision and HDR10 formats. It has an incredible a million to one contrast ratio. It has the best color accuracy. It integrates our unique 3D touch technology right into the display. And like iPhone 8, it includes True Tone. Now, all this innovative Super Retina display technology is great, but it's the point of it that matters. And the point of it is to enable an entirely new experience that's more fluid, more intuitive. So let's start with the simplest thing. How do you wake up your iPhone 10? Well, certainly you can raise to wake just like before, but now you can also just tap on the screen and it wakes up. Now with the display going edge to edge and top to bottom, there's no more home button. And this is an important part and a big step forward in the iPhone user experience. Something we use hundreds of times a day for so many tasks is an opportunity to rethink how iPhone should work and how we can make it better. So now, when you want to go to the home screen, you simply swipe up from the bottom and you go home. It's that simple. It's that easy. It's incredibly smooth. And once you do it for the first time, you'll know there's never been a better way. And it works the same way across the system. If you're running an app, like mail, and you want to go home, what do you do? You simply swipe up from the bottom, and you go home. It's that easy and that intuitive. So much nicer. Now, the same fluid gesture also works for multitasking. So if you're in an app and you want to multitask, you just swipe up from the bottom, you pause for a split second, and you're in multitasking. And then you can tap on any app and jump right to it. We also use the home button for Siri. So how are we going to do that now? Well, of course, you can just speak to your phone as before and say, hey, Siri. No, I didn't. Just setting one's phone's off. Or you can now press the side button in, which has been made larger. Once you press it in, you can just talk to Siri. I know what you're thinking about. Well, what about unlocking? How do you unlock your phone with iPhone 10? I mean, this has been a very important part of the iPhone user experience from the very beginning. The first iPhone, we led the way with multi-touch, and we created Slide to Unlock. And this protected the iPhone from turning on when you didn't want it to, like in your pocket. Starting with iPhone 5S, we invented Touch ID. We made it fast and easy to protect all your data and <coughs> unlock your phone with just your fingerprint. Touch ID became the gold standard for consumer device biometric protection. But we know we can do something better. The iPhone 10 your iPhone is locked until you look at it and it recognizes you. Nothing has ever been simpler, more natural, and effortless. We call this Face ID. So Face ID is the future of how we will unlock our smartphones and protect our sensitive information. To make Face ID possible, it took some of the most advanced technology we have ever created. And much of it is packed right up here into this tiny little area at the top of the display. We call this the True Depth Camera System. And it is made up of incredible state-of-the-art technology. There's an infrared camera, a flood illuminator, the front side camera, and a dot projector. And that's not all. There's also the proximity sensor, the ambient light sensor, the speaker and microphone, all packed to this true depth camera system area. It is amazing. And here's how it works. Every time you glance at your iPhone 10, it detects your face with the flood illuminator, even in the dark. The IR camera takes an IR image. The dot projector projects out over 30,000 invisible IR dots. We use the IR image and the dot pattern and we push them through neural networks to create a mathematical model of your face. And then we check that mathematical model against the one that we've stored that you set up earlier to see if it's a match and unlock your phone. And this all happens in real time. It all happens invisibly. You don't see these things going off. It's incredible. It just all works. It all happens. To create Face ID, we worked with thousands of people around the world, and the team took over a billion images. 
with that, they develop multiple neural networks to create face ID. And to process the machine learning in face ID's neural networks, he built Apple's first ever neural engine. Yeah, this is a big deal. In our pockets, in our phones, is an A11 bionic chip with a built-in neural engine to process face recognition. Now, the neural engine is specialized hardware built for a specific set of machine learning algorithms. This is another example of the incredible collaboration between the hardware and software teams that's only possible at Apple. The neural engine is a state-of-the-art ultra-fast processing system. It uses our highest density computing ever. It's a dual-core design. It can perform over 600 billion operations per second, and it's used to the real-time processing of face ID recognition. But for all of us, it's just super easy and fun to use. When you set up Face ID, you just follow the on-screen instructions, and it tells you how to move your head around in the camera so Face ID can recognize your face. And that's it, you do that once when you set it up. And Face ID learns your face. Even if you change your hairstyle, you decide to put on glasses, you're wearing a hat, so you do it up any way you do it, Face ID learns your face. It learns who you are. And it adapts to you as your face changes over time. Let's say you start to grow a beard. It works at day. It works at night. And the teams worked hard to make sure the face ID can easily be spoofed by things like photographs. They've even gone and worked with professional mask makers and makeup artists in Hollywood to protect against these attempts to beat face ID. These are actual masks used by the engineering team to train the neural networks to protect against them, face ID. It's incredible. The teams worked hard to protect your face data. Yes. Your face data is protected with the secure enclave and the ALF bionic chip. All the processing is done on iPhone 10 and not sent to a server. We require user attention to unlock. That means if your eyes are closed, you're looking away, it's not going to unlock. Now, how do we compare that to Touch ID? How secure is it? Well, there's no perfect system, not even biometric ones. But as we said earlier, Touch ID is the gold standard for consumer device biometric protection. And the data for Touch ID has been 1 in 50,000, meaning that the chance that a random person could use their fingerprint to unlock your iPhone been about 1 in 50,000, and it's been great. So what are the similar statistics for Face ID? One in a million. <laughs> the chance that a random person in the population could look at your iPhone 10 and unlock it with their face is about one in a million. Now, of course, the statistics are lower if that person shares a close genetic relationship with you. So, for example, if you happen to have an evil twin, you really need to protect your passcode or your sensitive data with a passcode. Hopefully you don't. Face ID also works with Apple Pay. So, to pay for things, you just double tap the button on the side, you look at iPhone 10 to authenticate, and hold it near the payment terminal to pay. It's that easy, fast, intuitive, simple. Face ID also works with third-party apps. Third-party apps already support Touch ID, and they'll work with Face ID. So apps like Mint, 1Password, E-Trade will all work with Face ID. So Face ID, it's face, uh, face authentication for unlocking your iPhone and protecting your sensitive data. You use the innovative TrueDepth camera system. It's trained with neural networks. It's easy to set up. It learns your face, and it adapts to your face over time. It's aware of your attention. It works with Apple Pay, and it works with third-party apps. This TrueDepth camera system is incredible technology, and it's going to enable so many great new user experiences. The first one, of course, is Face ID. But the team decided to create another great experience with it as well. This is a fun one. It has to do with emojis. And we use emojis to communicate with others to express emotion. But of course, you can't customize emojis. They only have a limited amount of expressiveness to them. So our team created something called an emoji. These are animated emojis. 
These are emojis that you control with your face. In emojis track more than 50 facial muscle movements. They've been meticulously animated to create amazing expressiveness. You just watch this, can't you? The way you create and share an emoji are right from within Apple Messages. You said a little late. Where are you? You can pick from a dozen different animated emojis to share and express whatever you want to express to your family and friends. So iPhone 10 is packed with innovative technologies that enable new user experiences. I'm really excited to invite out Craig Federici to show you iPhone 10 and what it's like to use it for the very first time. Craig? Hey, everybody. Wow. Well, I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to give all of you your first live look at iPhone 10. Uh, this is a phone we've been dreaming about for a long time, but the reality of it in your hand, it's, uh, it's really something epic. So let's take a look. Here is iPhone 10. Now, unlocking it is as easy as looking at it and swiping up. And, you know, let's try that again. Ho, ho, ho. Let's uh, go to back up here and get right in. So here we are, and you see this expansive display. It's just a beautiful canvas for all of your content and your gestures. And I'm just going to go into the weather app here, and you can just see how apps look when they take advantage of the edge-to-edge -edge display. Now, exiting an app couldn't be easier. You just swipe from the bottom, just like this, and throw the app right back on the home screen. Let me do that again. Swipe right up. Let's take a look at the web. It just looks unbelievable, edge to edge, on this display. And your photos, of course, are just gorgeous as well. Let's jump into this one. Just amazing. <laughs> Now, video, of course, is unbelievable on the Super Retina display. It looks great in portrait and in landscape. Of course, this is HDR video. Just incredible looking. And Phil told you a little bit about multitasking on the device. Let me show you. I'm just going to jump into Maps. If I want to move between my applications, I can just swipe up and stop. And my other apps all come in. I can get at them with a tap, just lift. It's just that easy. And we have a great shortcut as well. You can actually move back between apps just by swiping along the bottom like this. It's really easy. Now, you may be wondering about Control Center. And worry not, right where your status indicators are in the upper right-hand corner, you can just swipe down and get a Control Center from anywhere. It's that easy. Now, let's take a look again at Face ID, because unlocking your phone is just amazingly intuitive. You just raise it, look at it, and swipe right up to get started. <laughs> but now, it's also incredibly fast, so I'm just going to do that again. I just raise it, look at it, swipe. I don't have to wait. And it's also really, really smart. So let's say I wake my phone, and I'm not looking at it stays locked, but once I give it my, once I give it my attention, well, it unlocks, and I can get right in. It's really cool. Now, Face ID is also great for Apple Pay, so if I'm at the register, I can just double click on the side button, I'm authenticated, and I can get in just like that. Now, the true depth camera behind Face ID isn't just about authentication. In fact, we've extended AR Kit with some incredible new face tracking capabilities that provide a whole new class of augmented reality experiences. Now, we've been working on one with Snapchat, and I'd like to show it to you now. So I'm going to launch in. You see it builds a mesh in my face, and now I can just select a mask. The tracking is just unreal. Let's check out this one. Now look at the detail over the eyes, 
the incredible metallic reflections, the quality of the tracking, it's, it's just stunning. Now, of course, many of us like to communicate with emoji. And with an emoji, we can now breathe our own personality into our favorites. It's available as an app right inside of Messages. I can just go right in here, and it immediately starts tracking me. So I can make whatever expression I want, like, and just pick that up and use it as a sticker, drop it on my message like that. We also let you manipulate these in full screen. You can audition your favorites, and there's some really great ones, like the kitty cat, he's so expressive and ferocious. It's a happy puppy. Check out the physics in the ears. The pig. <laughs> We've got a chicken. And the unicorn, mythical creature, favorite of the startup. And yes. If you were by chance wondering what humanity would do when given access to the most advanced Whoa. facial tracking technology available, you now have your answer. <laughs> now, these can be so much fun, you're going to want to share them. And fortunately, we let you record messages. I'm going to record a message here for Tim. Hey, uh, Tim, I'm not sure what the protocol is here, but I'd like to call dibs on the box for my favorite emoji. Uh, which one do you like? Hey, uh, Tim, I'm not sure what the protocol is here, but I'd like to call dibs on the box for my favorite emoji. Uh, which one do you like? Now, you can send it with just, just a tap, and it appears as a looping video right inside the transcript. We're really lucky for our grand finale. We might just get a response back from Tim. Oh, here it is. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Take me to your leader. <laughs> Wait a minute, Craig. I am your leader. Let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> so that is your first look at the new iPhone 10 and the amazing experience with the True Depth camera and Animoji. I think you're going to love it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Now let's talk about the amazing cameras in iPhone 10. iPhone 10 has dual 12, 12 megapixel sensors, dual cameras, both a faster sensors, wider sensors, just like an iPhone 8. It has new color filters, new deeper pixels. There's an f1.8 aperture on the wide angle camera and a faster f2.4 aperture on the telephoto. So that lets in 36% more light to the telephoto camera. The big news on the camera, the iPhone 10, is it has dual optical image stabilization. That means there's OIS on both the wide angle and the telephoto lens. That's a lot of magnets moving around in a very small space, but it helps with compensating for handshake and to take better photos and videos in low light. There's also a better quad LED two-tone flash that is twice the uniformity of light on our subjects. So let's look at some photos taken from the backside camera on iPhone 10. Absolutely beautiful. Great dynamic range, detail, low noise. This is a beautiful photo. The textures are simply stunning. Now there's zero shutter lag that helps to freeze motion so we can get a photo like this. Look at that blue sky with low noise. It's absolutely to die for. The OIS delivers low light performance so now you can get incredible low light images like this with the telephoto camera as well as the wide angle iPhone 10 is fantastic for the portrait mode feature that we all love. In iPhone 10, you can get great portrait modes, especially in lower light. And iPhone 10 supports the brand new portrait lighting feature as well. That's, a, again, a photo taken right off of iPhone 10, not retouched in any way, with the stage lighting effect dropping off the background. <laughs> iPhone 10 is great for photos. It's amazing for 4K video. And, like iPhone 8, it's tuned for AR applications. It has factory calibrated cameras, the new gyroscope, an accelerometer, the performance advantages of the A11, bionic chips, CPU, GPU, and ISP, and AR kit is tuned for iPhone 10. 
Now, the backside camera that we use so much is not the only camera, of course, on the iPhone. We have our front side camera as well, and people love to use those for taking selfie photographs. And now with iPhone 10 and its true depth camera, it really delivers a breakthrough in the photos you can take for selfies. Because now with selfies, you can take portrait mode photos as well. And it also supports portrait lighting all through the front side true depth camera. People are going to be blown away with the selfies you can take with the iPhone 10. This is absolutely beautiful. And of course, everything we've seen is powered in iPhone 10 by the amazing new A11 Bionic chip. We talked all about an iPhone 8, but it's worth hitting on the highlights again because there has never been anything like it. A 64-bit, six-core design, 4.3 billion transistors, two high-performance cores, four high-efficiency cores, our new second-generation performance controller that uses all six cores at once, our first Apple-designed graphics processing unit, the brand-new ISP that improves autofocus, the video encoder that does real-time motion analysis while you're shooting video, the neural engine, and, of course, the secure enclave to protect our Face ID data. All this performance, I'm sure, as you expect, does come with a hit to battery life. So I think it's important to tell you that we've increased it. It lasts. Yes. Again, hardware and software teams work really hard to deliver two more hours of all day battery life to us. So, wireless. Just like iPhone 8, iPhone 10 is also built for a wireless world. It has Qi charging through the glass back, and it will work with the Qi charging devices like the ones we mentioned earlier from Mophie and Falcon. And also work with third party Qi devices that are Qi certified. And there are a lot of great devices that are going to start to come to market, particularly because of iPhone 8 and iPhone 10. But we also think we can make the wireless charging experience even better. If our team wants to create something, I think all of us are going to want to use, and it might actually help move the entire industry forward. So we're going to give you a sneak peek of this idea right now. I'm sure many of you do this. I do this. I have a lot of Apple products. I love them. I use them all day long. I charge them at night. You plug in your cables, you plug in your chargers, you take those cables and chargers with you on the road when you travel. We think we have an idea of how to make this a better experience. And here it is. It's a mat that you place your iPhone 8 or iPhone 10 down, and it just starts to charge. And there's a beautiful new interface. If it doesn't stop there, you can place your Series 3 Apple Watch down on it, and it starts to charge as well. And you can place your AirPods with the optional new wireless charging case on it, and it starts to charge as well. They all charge. <laughs> this system has a great interface. They intelligently work together and communicate with each other to manage the charging through one more efficient charging system. This is not possible with current standards, but our team knows how to do this. We call it air power. <laughs>